What's up, Tube? Welcome to my next video, Why'd I Do That? Um, today we're gonna take a look at my hydronic heating system, which uh, takes care of my hot water, domestic hot water, and the actual heating of the inside of the coach. Um, it also does an engine preheat on my diesel motor for the rig itself. So this week's question is, why'd I do that? Why did I install a diesel fired boiler for the rig? And before I get into why, let me explain what it is. It is an Oasis NES 50,000 BTU diesel fired boiler and it heats the domestic hot water, it preheats the engine, and it heats the coach with fan driven heater cores. The reason I went with a diesel fired boiler is because I wanted to stick with one fuel on the rig. And right now the truck runs on diesel, so it's a pretty easy conclusion to come up with a diesel fired boiler. Um, and the nice thing about this boiler is it does the domestic water and it's endless heat, which is awesome. So I can take a shower literally as long as the water lasts. Um, and it heats the coach and again, it preheats the engine on the truck. So that one device does everything. And really the driving factor, not only the one fuel, it was getting away from propane. And if any of you guys have spent any time in an RV with propane, especially in the winter time, you know that the moisture will build up on the walls, on the windows, which is a big deal because it can freeze and usually does. The other big problem with propane is over time, especially in a vehicle that's gonna be an off-road four-wheel drive vehicle, things can kind of work loose a little bit. You can start getting propane leaks. Um, so you have to have a propane detector inside the coach so you don't kill yourself. Um, so not the best situation if you can avoid it. Um, the other thing is with propane, I don't know that they make an all-in-one that does everything. You usually have a propane furnace, a propane water heater. Um, you'll actually have propane cooktops. Um, I could have gone with a diesel cooktop if I really wanted to. I stuck with electric because I have ample battery storage to run everything and then some in this rig. That's another video. Uh, nonetheless, that's... The bulk of the reasons why I went with this uh, diesel fire boiler, the other main reason is the safety and the single fuel were probably the driving, re well, were definitely the driving factors behind why I um, went with a diesel fired boiler. And why did I go with Oasis? I did a lot of research. Um, Aquahot is one that is out there that has been around for a while. Didn't get a whole a lot of good reviews on that one, so I didn't really get a good feeling about their service and the quality of product. And I'll tell you what, guys, Oasis um, International Thermal Research out of Vancouver, Washington, I think that's where they're at, um, for the States, have been hands down one of the best companies I've dealt with. They have responded via email, they've responded via um, phone conversations, because I've had a couple issues. I had, um, an air intake or air exhaust fan go out, had to troubleshoot that, replace it, and then I had a um, flame sensor uh, go out, and that thing kicked my butt for a while before we figured out what was going on. Um, they had me troubleshoot it, they had me take it apart, they had me test it, um, they were on the phone with me, I'd go out and try something, that didn't work, I'd call them back. They have been great guys. So I've only really had two issues um, with this thing. Over the last year or so that I've been using it, year and a half, yeah, a year and a half-ish, almost two years. Um, it has performed great. And like I said, their customer service is just outstanding. Um, it's super simple to work on. I was really impressed that I was able to, even that thing, that whole unit being in sideways, I was able to disassemble everything. I was able to, I've serviced it twice, so I've cleaned out the, um, the, the guts of that thing. I've serviced it, replaced filters. Um, replaced all the stuff you're supposed to replace and I didn't have to take it anywhere which is awesome because when you're on the road and you're in the middle of nowhere there's not necessarily gonna be somebody that knows how to deal with that so the fact that that thing is serviceable by me is huge so those are probably the three big ones um, why I did that um, single fuel um, so we'll go with single fuel and no propane is in there 
Um, serviceability is another big one. And then everything in one system was the other one. Cause I could have got a diesel fired heater for the space and then maybe a, a separate one for heating the water and then something else for heating the um, preheat on the engine. So this thing does everything in one unit. It is awesome. So here is my Oasis heater inside the bay. And when they tell you to, in, on the instructions on installing this thing, they tell you to actually install this with that face pointing out because that face comes off and that is how you actually access the blower motor, um, all your little connections, uh, disconnects, drain, any service part of it, that's where you access it to. There's another side panel over here that you can also access for some things, um, but that is the main way in. And I've had to work on this thing a couple times and it's not the end of the world to have this come down all the way and work in this way versus straight in. Um, but I think it'd be a lot easier if I had the space, which I just don't, and that's why it's sideways, to have it go in the long way. So this this is the uh, Oasis NE, and I believe mine is 50,000 BTUs. And there is the, basically the control board um, that tells you what's going on right now. None of the zones are calling for heat. None of the fans are on. Um, you see there's a green light and a red light. There's also this control panel here, um, which if there's a red light on any of these, that means a code's been thrown and that helps the guys at uh, International Thermal Re Research, which is where this is from, diagnose what's going on. So yeah, so up here, these are heating supply loops. Um, I have one that goes specifically to the hydronic bays and then I have one that goes specifically to the coach. Obviously cold water uh, input, hot water output. And then over here, these are my two lines for the uh, circulating, a separate circulating pump just for the diesel motor of the truck. And then back there, you'll see I have, those are return lines. That is a return coolant line uh, or an overflow line. And then if you look up in there, that is a giant fuel filter. It looks like an oil filter. Um, that thing is about the size of a oil filter on a car, but you need that filter to push the diesel through because they pump so many gallons a minute through it and dump the excess that the uh, boiler is not using back into the uh, diesel tank. So the last couple bits on this thing, you'll notice there are two uh, 110 electrical lines and those are marine grade electrical lines. Those are running from the breaker panel to here controlling the two 1500 watt electrical elements that can work in tandem or independent of the diesel burner. This little guy right here goes through the wall and that is my fresh air intake. There is actually a compressor that runs to force the air into the combustion chamber to get this thing to run properly. And I actually had to replace the uh, combustion fan inside here. And I'll show you that at some point here shortly. Uh, what else am I missing? Ah, the exhaust. So I have, the exhaust comes right out of the bottom of this thing. And you can see I've had it kind of tempt in for a while because I have yet to figure out where that's gonna go where it's not gonna jack with uh, my living space. You're not supposed to have it exhaust out under the slide outs, which is like this. So, and you can only have so many feet um, and so many bends. Every time you make a bend, it takes away from the lineal feet that you can have. So I'm still trying to work that out for now. This comes on and off pretty easily and it works great. So let me pull this guy off and this guy off and I will show you the inside workings of this Mad Bama Jamma. <laughs> yeah, I said Mad Bama Jamma. Well guys, there it is. The inner workings of a 50,000 BTU diesel beast. <laughs> anyway, um, as you can see, this is my um, separate system over here um, for the preheat on the engine. 
This is actually the a separate system, and it has uh, a different kind of antifreeze. This has the truck antifreeze in it. This has GRAS, which is supposed to be uh, safe if it intermingles with uh, drinking water, which it's not meant to, obviously. Anyway, mixing valve, uh, drain valve to drain down the uh, uh, plumbing. And then on this side, this panel is supposed to fold all the way down and I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. Eventually the panel will fold all the way down. But what I usually do is just unclip those um, connectors so I can get to this thing. And if you look in there, that is basically everything. Um, you can see the compressor there on the left side with the red and black wire coming out of it. Um, and that piece of steel with the glass window in it, that's the combustion chamber. And that is where the spray nozzle is and the flame sensor and a couple other things. And that is very accessible once this front plate is taken off. Everything has quick connects, or buck connectors rather, um, so you can unplug it and replace it if it has to be serviced. So again, this thing is super serviceable, even in the field. Um, I've had to take this thing apart up on Rabbit Ears Pass when it was 10 degrees, trying to clean out my uh, spray nozzle to see if that was an issue, because um, this thing was shutting down on me, and come to find out it was the flame sensor, but I didn't know it at the time um, that it was fried. Uh, anyway, there's the guts, boys and girls, and that's the whole system. Now let me get this thing back together and we'll head inside. So as I mentioned, I have uh, basically three zones. Um, I have the zones that are actually I have, let's see, a bathroom zone that's on its own thermostat. I have the living space, which is on its own thermostat. I have the bays and the belly that's on its own thermostat. And then I have a switch for the uh, preheat on the engine of the truck. So let's take a look. I have two of these guys. These are my thermostats and they're specific. This is digital. They also have a analog or the typical one you're used to the seeing the slide uh, mechanism. You have to use their thermostats because they are paired with their device. Um, basically it has a, a few settings, nighttime, so I can hit that button, it goes down to whatever I want the nighttime set for, and then obviously daytime, um, or you can adjust it manually. And that will control whatever um, units are tied to that thermostat. That thermostat will run that one. I have one in the kitchen, which is right down there. And I have one more in the bedroom. On the front side, you can see the fins. Um, obviously that's where the heat is radiating through these tubes, just like a radiator. And on the back, you can see I have a pair of fans. On the left side, I have an inlet. On the right side, I have an outlet. That's where the liquids are coming in and out of. And then when this thing gets to temp, those fans actually kick on and start blowing the heat into the room. It does an amazing job of keeping this rig warm. So much so that I have a separate one in the bathroom. And what's really nice about this, and also that thermostat controls all three of the um, heater cores that I have throughout the coach inside the living area. This thermostat controls that one guy down there, which might be hard to see, apologize. And the reason for this is basically I can close the door completely and then turn this thing up to like 80 or 82 um, if it's cold outside and get this one room like five or 10 degrees warmer than the rest of the coach. And it is so nice being able to turn the heat up in the shower and take not only a hot shower, but have it nice and warm when you get done taking a shower so you're not shivering. Uh, while you're drying off. So this guy right here is the last component of the Oasis system. It is the control panel for the inside of the rig. And it's pretty simple. It has an on off switch for the diesel fired burner. And obviously you can see that guy's running right now. 
And it also has a switch for the AC, and that's the two 1500 watt elements that are in there. And you can go to one element, and obviously it tells you it's on, or both elements. And it'll do both the burner and the elements, or if you shut the burner off, it'll just do AC heat. It's pretty cool. And then your other switch is just an engine preheat switch. And I usually sh turn that bugger on the night before, and as the burner is heating up the inside of the coach, and keeping it warm, it also heats up the uh, the engine. So by the time you wake up in the morning, engine's ready to go. You can fire that bugger right up, regardless of how cold it is. And then these two little guys right here are just um, fault indicators, meaning if you see a red light up on here, you have to go down below in the bay and find out what's going on. Well, guys, I hope that answers everything you ever wanted to know about a diesel fired heater and or I guess just my diesel fired heater. And as always, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll answer. There was a lot more I could have gone into, uh, but I'm trying to keep the video a little shorter than uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> um, but that pretty well sums it up. Um, and again, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Enjoy the series.